We didn't have all these street lights in, so she would shoot and play basketball by the moonlight. You just saw the talent in her. Messer to the hole, she scores! She just played the game the way it should be played, and that is hard. She just loved the game. Bank is open for Satia, 16 now in the game. from Waldo, Arkansas. Go ahead, last joke. Where's Waldo? I get it everywhere I go. She was born April 14, 1977. I graduated May 13, 1977, till she kind of interfered with my graduation. I am the youngest of eight. I have uh, four sisters and three brothers. She's always been the sweetest young lady. Uh, my parents were really proud of her. She came, my parents were older when they had her, and she was just been the light of their lives. I would always say the same joke to my mom. It's the best day of your life. I was born, worst day of your life, you married this guy. And I would laugh about my dad. He's like, every year you say the same joke, but. <laughs> well, for those who don't know the state of Arkansas or, or that's that part of our country, small town, you know? So I like to tell the story that when you uh, meet somebody from Waldo, uh, they're going to know somebody named Messer. We had this little thing as the Messer family. The older one would take the younger one outside next to him and beat him. Now, you had to learn to play basketball to beat them. You ball it out. You see what you're made of, and you get bragging rights until you can win. So my older sister, which is Kathy, she took my next sister, which is Paula, no mercy, you gonna get beat. So you had to learn. So my brother took Tia outside. Guess what? No mercy. My sibling that's uh, closest to me, his name is Marlon Messer, and he's four years older than me, my brother. I think I was in his second grade, second grade when he took me out. And uh, I mean, he played me like I was one of the guys. Tia got beat, but she was determined, so. We didn't have all these street lights in little old Waldo. Um, so she would shoot and play basketball by the moonlight. And she kept playing and kept playing till finally he had no mercy, but he didn't beat her. I knew that there were people outside, even outside my sisters that played Marcina Dunn, who was tremendous. Um, Alda Thomas, I actually played with her. She was great. And uh, Sharonda Ransom, Rita Thomas. I mean, these people were, really great players and good people. And so that sense of pride of uh, carrying that Bulldog tradition was, was great. Satia, at a young age, um, she was the superstar from Waldo. When she came out the locker room, little girls were lined up to get her autograph. So that, that, that was really uh, something good that one of the major highlights that I do remember. But Tia did so much, you know, she was, she just loved the game. She was very, very talented. She was a powerful wing type player, of course, in high school. She had to do a lot of what all high school players do and play multiple positions. I was a big fan of Cheryl Swoops. She played at Texas Tech, led them to their first national championship. Cynthia Cooper, um, Coach Mulkey, Kim Mulkey. I had a chance to uh, follow her career as well. Of course, my sisters. Uh, as far as NBA, Magic Johnson. I was a huge Magic Johnson fan. I wore number 32 in high school because of Magic Johnson. Uh, great, great, great guy. I love the big guard. The guards that can do it all. That can play point, can go post you up, do it all. She visited several schools. She was recruited by even uh, UConn, uh, Tennessee, Baylor. And believe it or not, back then, I was pulling for Baylor. I wanted her to go to school at Baylor. And so my parents were like, okay, you're going to treat people in this recruiting process the way that you would want to be treated, number one. Uh, we're going to be upfront and honest. I knew personally that I didn't want to go far away from home. I spent 19 years of my life at Louisiana Tech University, so you know all the regional area. 
and in particular you're going to know southern arkansas players because we recruited camden we recruited all that area so it basically came down to louisiana tech which coach Moki at the time was an assistant coach and i had kept up with her career so i was kind of like a fan you just saw the talent in her the strength she was very strong um, and, and she just played the game the way it should be played, and that is hard. She played very hard. She wanted to, to play for her home state, so I think she was kind of determined to play for Arkansas, to play at that school. And when she made that visit, her mind was made up, I'm going to Arkansas. So that's where we began, Razorbacks. So I want to be the female Carlos Williamson, so, um, and I want to be able to to be a role model for these young ladies in the state and uh, specifically in Waldo in that community. Um, and so that's why I decided to go to the University of Arkansas specifically to, to carry the, the mission, um, the mission through. And that's that you can be anything you put your mind to. Recruited her hard, but um, I couldn't get her to leave the state. She stayed in the state of Arkansas. I would say in high school, maybe she was always a step above her level. But when she got to college, everybody was good, you know what I mean? Even the, the best got, got chosen. So when she got to college, she had to, to adjust to that. You know, one thing I would say that helped me in that transition going to, uh, from high school to college was my AAU programs. Typically, um, when I played, um, there was very few years but most years I was the only black on, on my team. Certainly you keep up with women's basketball and um, you knew that honestly she was going from a part of the state of Arkansas to a part she probably wasn't real familiar with because it's quite different. I will add this though, going to, uh, to college was different from, you know, uh, classes at Waldo where you 13 people maybe and being in big classrooms uh, in college. That was a little different. It's my sophomore year. We played Tennessee, the University of Tennessee. Um, Shamika Holscaw is one of the best player in the country at that particular time. Tennessee is Pat Summit. They've won multiple national championships. She would practice against the guys so she could be ready to um, to hold Shamiqua when she had to play against her. While I was home, my brother Marlon, the one that used to take me out and, uh, and play me hard in basketball, he would walk around the house like he was dunking on me. And he would be like, oh, Shamiqua just dunked on her. Shamiqua, oh, you wait till you go back. You wait, you wait. She's going to get you. I can't wait. It's going to be on ESPN. Meek is going to get you. I mean, he's just hyping me the whole Christmas break. And I'm like, I just want to eat. <laughs> Some of my mama's dinner. I, I'm tired of this cafeteria food and, and chill. And you and so, but he he knew how to motivate me. And she knew that it was gonna be her job to hold Shamikwa down. I was deeply inside, like you wait, you wait till we play him. University of Tennessee the first time and the University of Arkansas school history. I hold Shamika host call to five points. To this day, the single uh, less points she's ever scored against anybody. She's an All-American Player of the Year, da da da. And so after the game, I walked up to him and go, uh, who's gonna get me? What's gonna happen? You know, she put them on the map at the University of Arkansas. She took them to a Final Four. Certainly she didn't do it by herself, but um, you know, she was a part of that team that um, could say, hey, we took the, the Razorbacks to a Final Four. Playing Duke in uh, San Francisco my junior year in the Elite Eight. And just how we did that collectively as a team we had people like Tennille Adams who came off the bench and just really 
was a great impact. Treva Christensen. Treva Christensen will try, and she hits. Beautiful ball oh. movement by Christy Smith. We beat Duke to advance to the Final Four. Do you believe in fairy tales? Yes! I kept up with all that and of course I kept up with it because Gary Blair was her coach and Gary Blair was an assistant at Louisiana Tech when I was a player at Louisiana Tech so I had kind of a double interest in keeping up with them. We had just gone to a Final Four my junior year, my senior year we were playing for a national uh, championship with the WNIT and uh, we were hosting at home so we were going to play on a Tuesday night and she had a heart attack. She, she came home to, um, to see my mother, you know, to, and, and uh, my, so my mother died and um, she decided she did not want to play basketball uh, anymore. The impact she had on me was you can always be better. You can always do better, and everywhere you go, you're gonna take the Lord. Her, her sisters took over the parenting of her when her parents passed away. So you have to give credit to her entire family on how you live your life and how you judge people. I think we all had a second mom role in our life. There's no Satya Messer without Stella Messer. There's no um, Molly Messer, no Kathy Messer, no one none of us without our mom. Uh, my mom is an amazing woman, the best woman I've ever known, uh, Christian. She took them places that they never would have gone and my mother got to experience a whole lot. When she passed, I not only lost my influence, the lady that influenced me on a daily basis, my spiritual partner at that particular time, my best friend, my mom, and my basketball career, I think the impact she had the most, as I mentioned, you can always do anything you put your mind to and carry the Lord, but she never forced basketball on me. I think that was something she did especially with she and my mom, and, and after that she, she knew that she would be needed more on the other side than to be playing. I served in many capacities while at Georgia Tech and something I, I really enjoyed doing was facilitating the hiring of um, new coaches and uh, I was given the assignment of picking Satya up from the airport and uh, the one thing I remember very vividly about Satya is first and foremost her smile like when you meet her right away she brightens up a room but she also has a very good sense of humor so um, we laughed a little bit. Uh, I remember us uh, talking about music, which would continue to be a theme in our friendship for years to come. But um, I do remember the pride of Waldo um, at the airport that day and uh, meeting her for the first time. Who that? Who that? Who that talk about beating the Bulldogs? Who that? <laughs> That's what I, that, that comes to mind. And then champions. When I found out that um, our school was getting closed down, it was really hard. And, you know, I just wasn't personally able to fight the way that I wanted to fight um, because I was just trying to survive at that particular time with things that were going on in my life. But uh, I was really sad. I felt like, again, no one cared. How do they let this tradition? If you did a documentary on basketball, Anywhere in the country, anywhere, Waldo basketball is right up there with, with the best schools. Um, and also, specifically in the state of Arkansas, when you have a community that uh, is embracing education, embracing sports, um, embracing people connecting, um, when you have that, that, that centerpiece, which was our school, 
go down, the town went down. I was at my sister's house. Uh, my brother brought the phone to me and was like, the gym's on fire, the gym's on fire. And someone was going live, I guess, or taking a picture or, or somehow. And I just, butterflies, I immediately got sick. And I thought, how do we let this gym burn down? Do you know how much uh, sweat, blood that was shared through that gym and just characters developed through the basketball standpoint and it was a getaway for us and it was a way to bring the community together. You're talking about angry and just disappointed I was. I was like man felt like when the school went down the gym on fire. It was like you know two hits two different times that were awful for our community. I hear a lot of my friends and colleagues in, this, in the basketball world talk about their high schools and um, not being able to say, well, this is my high school and what we're doing now um, is really sad. So in 98, we're playing in the Final Four at Kansas City. Coach Moke is an assistant coach in Louisiana Tech. And like, it was halftime of our game and her team from Louisiana Tech was walking down, we were walking down, I walked right into her. And she asked me, how's it going? I said, it's pretty good, we're in the Final Four. She said, we both are, aren't we, sweetie? I'm proud of you. So we kind of kept that relationship. Um, and I become a head coach at Tennessee Tech. I bring my team to Waco, Texas, to play against uh, Baylor. Her personality just lights up a room and she doesn't have to say a word. She just smiles at you. And I gave her a big hug and, and just, you know, just it was like, it just seemed like yesterday that I was watching her play in high school, and she did very well at Tennessee Tech. She was there for three years, and um, then uh, I kept up with her. She went back to Georgia Tech, which uh, she had coached at before. And then Kim Mulkey calls. Kim Mulkey says, says to Tim Esker, I need you here at Baylor. She said, you're not going to turn me down twice. I need you to come. Come help me uh, continue this thing at Baylor. I reached out to her, and... I said, well, I'm going to try this again. I didn't get you the first time I recruited you as a player, so maybe I can recruit you to become one of my assistant coaches, and, um, and the rest is history. I stayed at Baylor for eight years, and we had a chance to win over well, eight conference championships, a national championship. You know, Satia was someone who was very, very serious about her work. Um, you know, you don't have the success that she has had over the course of time if you're not someone who has a relentless work ethic. And so I just remember Satya and I being the two that were still in the office late at night, you know, working hard, trying to get our work done, getting ahead of the game. And um, Satya was just always very competitive in, in what she was doing, in particular around recruiting, where she has established herself as a, one of the best in college basketball. When you're a head coach like she was for three years, you're in charge of the entire floor. So, um, you know, for me, it was working with the guards on the floor, but her biggest impact was in recruiting. People want to know that you're going to take care of their kid. Um, and you have to understand, we're asking these parents to take their kids from the ages of 18 to 22, which is vulnerable years. And um, so I would say the great thing, the first thing about being a great recruiter is that reputation of I'm going to take this young lady at a vulnerable age and help her develop to this woman. And uh, I just, I think she's just one of the, the most outstanding recruiters in the country and sometimes she doesn't have to say very much. She just listens. The Baylor just felt right. It was my last one out of five and I just really like the environment, really like the coaches, the team, and it something just clicked and it felt right for me. She impacted my career so much when I was at Baylor, and she continues to do so. And she can assure the parents, if you let your daughter come here, I'm gonna look out for her, I'm gonna take care of her. And that's exactly what she does. She, most of her players will tell you, I, I trust the Tia Messer, because she's, what you see is what you get. Great family person, great coach, great competitor. She knows the game. She knows what she's talking about. 
and she will always be there for you. I always used to make fun of, of, of mess. I call her mess, you know, some people call her messer, I call her mess. The mess, actually. Um, but she is very intense as a coach. I would always tease her because her nostrils flare when she gets really serious. And so um, she's very competitive uh, between the lines and obviously wants to win every possession. And when we started the NCAA run, Coach Messer, she created this puzzle. The ideal of the puzzle actually came from LeBron James and um, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the year that um, they came back in the championship to beat the Warriors. And I thought it was wonderful because what happens when you've been in it, I've been doing this 36, 37 years, you tend to take things for granted a little bit and you need to step back and think, this puzzle is a wonderful idea. Each game we will pick someone or multiple people just to put that piece in. And in the end, we had the opportunity to put the final piece to the puzzle in Tampa. And uh, 2019, it was a special, special moment. Wow, that seemed so surreal. I just couldn't believe it, I'm sitting here. I watched this on TV, but now I am sitting here. I'm sitting behind Baylor's bench. I'm looking at my little sister coach, the little girl that shot basketball by the moonlight. Now she's here with the big bright lights. And I can tell you that was one of the, the best experiences I've ever had. And I know she had. And it was like, Finally, Mama, I got this for you. I did this for you. I watched her when she climbed up that ladder and cut down those nets. She smiled and she was so proud. Not only was she proud for Satia, she was proud for her city. She, she was proud to come back and say, listen, no matter where you come from, no matter what the obstacles you have to overcome, no matter what you do, as long as you give it your best, continue to do your best. Look what can happen to you. A little girl from Waldo, population 1,722. Uh, my mom was the first thing that came to my mind and uh, all the support and the hard years she's put into me. Uh, and now I'm pouring that into these young ladies and ultimately we win a championship together. So it was a very, very special moment which do I, I equate the most, the national championship or the Hall of Fame. Now, to know that you're considered by your peers as one of the best, um, it, was, it was, I don't know, it was game changing for her. That's a big deal. You know, when you think about her time at the University of Arkansas, you know, Nolan Richardson and, and all those teams and great players that were there and Satya Messer, she, she carved her own niche there. To be inducted into their Hall of Fame speaks volumes not only of her talent, but of her as a person. And uh, when you think of the state of Arkansas and the history of, of basketball, um, Satya Messer's name's up there with the best of them. This was done in honor of her mother to, to put a cap on it. You know, I've done all of these deeds, all these things I've done, but to have the people to say I'm one of the best to be in the Hall of Fame and again you know we were just like blown away and more than anything I know that for the young women that have played on the basketball court for her um, no matter where she's been it's inspirational you know at the end of the day seeing um, that hard work pay off and seeing the consistency of her success is just extremely inspirational for me and the crazy part is she's not close to being done And I'm delighted that so many of your seven siblings are with us here today. And I hope that all of your 20 plus nieces and nephews join in cheering on the nights at game. So I am proud to announce the right coach at the right time. Your new head women's basketball coach, Coach Satya Messer. 
Well, guess what? My dream just became true. And being a head coach here at UCL. And you're used to championships. I'm used to championships. Let's do this. Let's do this.